I hate that I'm making this video. Making this video isn't going to be fun. I will have no enjoyment talking about a show that I felt had insane amounts of potential circling down the drain over the last couple of years, seemingly making zero good decisions in the meantime, leaving us with the product we are about to witness for two months or so that we're supposed to call Big Brother Canada 12. This video was originally going to be a cast assessment of the BBCAN 12 cast, and I was pretty excited and engaged with rumors of live feeds coming back and a potential all-star season as well. Unfortunately, with no disrespect to the cast or the two all-stars we are about to watch play this game again, I really just don't care. There's no feeling of excitement or energy in my body that I can give or even fake give for this new season. And that, I'm sure, is true for so many other people who, like me, were all in on Big Brother Canada. I thought Big Brother Canada 9 and 10 were incredible seasons of Big Brother, back to back. And we could have been at a point where Big Brother Canada was surpassing Big Brother US as a product. I think a lot of us were reaching that point. That was until the early months of 2023 when Big Brother Canada announced they will be switching out the live feeds for this brand new clip show called Digital Dailies. Basically an hour or two hours of quote unquote live feed content to show the viewers to give them a taste of what's going on in the game. And it was terrible. They were never consistent about when they would release it. It didn't even release every day when they were consistent. There was no set time it would release, so it could release in the middle of the morning or at the end of night. And they wouldn't even give us relevant information about the game, so the episodes they release would be able to break that news on who won comps or what alliances were truly running the game or whatever it was. It was a disaster when it comes to the online community as there was barely any presence throughout the season. And that's a real shame because despite the world of issues last season, I was higher on it than most. But I can't excuse it anymore because we're about to enter our second short year of this terrible decision by BB Can, and it's not going to end well. I don't think Big Brother Canada will be here much longer. I just don't. They are truly only in it for the money at this point, if that isn't obvious by their constant need to mention that they have a record-breaking 11 sponsors this season. Oh, aren't we so lucky. They've completely missed the mark on what makes Big Brother Big Brother. The live feed aspect is what makes the show unique. You get to keep up to date on what all the house guests are doing live and in the moment. You see the rise of players, the fall of players, and everything in between in the moment and that is fascinating to experience firsthand. That was fundamentally what Big Brother was built upon and removing that aspect makes it a completely different show. You might as well just call it Survivor in a house because that's what it is at this point. We're forced to read an edited product that isn't planned out for what the outcome might be like Survivor is. These people are editing these episodes in real time as they happen, so you have no idea what narrative they will choose to follow or what players to give focus to. It's all up in the air and rarely accurate to what is actually going on in the house. So what's the point? If Big Brother Canada only cares about if they're going to get Samsung as a sponsor and not if people will actually be interested in watching their show, why make this video? The reason I'm making this video is because Big Brother Canada was great. I think BB Can 5 and BB Can 10 are two of the greatest seasons of Big Brother, period, across all countries and across all versions. There is proven success within this franchise, but production never truly cared about giving a show that people will love. They want to make a show that will put money in their pocket, and that's where we're at. I feel terrible for Arissa. I think she's an amazing host, and I don't honestly know what her role was within the removal of live feeds and frankly all the terrible decisions they've made the past two years but for her sake and our sake i want the show to be thriving again have the internet screaming and freaking out and talking about who their faves are whether or not we had an all-stars cast because even then i don't think that's the main point one of the worst seasons ever of big brother was bb22 the only all-star season of big brother we've had since 2006 Yes, if this season was All-Stars, it would have brought people to talk about it, whether or not we had live feeds or not. But if we had live feeds and we had a production team that seemed to care about the show they are producing, we would be excited no matter what, I promise you. Big Brother US may suck sometimes, but damn it would they get us excited in the preseason, every year without fail. That is all I want. Not every season needs to be an all-timer. We just want to feel like the show means something to somebody. And in its current iteration, 
Not a soul cares about what is going on in the world of Big Brother Canada. And that's a shame. I get so sad watching somebody like Taryn Armstrong get ready to cover the season of Big Brother Canada, and you know he's not excited for it. This is going to be a chore for him to keep up with the digital dailies and try to assess what the hell will be going on in the house. That isn't fair. He shouldn't have to dread having to watch this show that I know he loves. But he does. And I think a lot of us feel the same way. And we're either going to force ourselves to watch this show, or tune out and wait for the summer for Big Brother 26. It's embarrassing either way. To end off the video, I want to bring up some tweets I was looking at. Just talking about Big Brother Canada 12 and show some insight on how a lot of the community is feeling with the current iteration of the show and that it's not just this random dude on the internet talking about it. Amon Adewin is one of my favorite Big Brother presences on the internet and here's his tweet here. Remember when Twitter would pop off on a day like this? I'm not going to spend too much time complaining this year because it is what it is but damn, what a clusterfuck of nothingness. I'm sure so many people feel that exact same way, and that's kind of a point I'm trying to prove in this video. This show feels lifeless. There's no energy. There's no excitement. There's nothing here that makes you want to watch this show, aside from the fact that it's Big Brother. And it wasn't like that. It used to be an insane day on Twitter once the cast got released, and all these rumors, and all of this going on. And it's just a dead zone. Sorry, I needed to spend this time because I was looking and I saw Spoiler Girl <laughs> announce that the live feeds are making a return, and it's funny because Spoiler Girl sucks. Um, yeah, I'll, that's all I want to say on this one. Here from Roy, in my opinion, if you aren't going to have live feeds, you should just pre-film the entire season so the episodes are stronger and have a narrative like Survivor. There is no reason and no point for the show to be this way if you're not going to have live feeds. The reason why the show happens in the moment is because of the live feeds. And you stripping down the show of that makes no logical sense. Shameless plug, I'm not gonna lie, but it's gonna be actively hilarious when we have no feeds and no all-stars. And here we go, just left us with disappointment once again. So this video is just a big rant and a last second video at that. No disrespect to the Big Brother Canada 12 cast, I will be watching. Um, if you couldn't tell by the footage here, I'm like 99% sure who the returning all-stars are. So yeah, there we go. Honestly, that's going to do it for me. There's nothing else I have to say. I don't plan on making a season review for the season unless it's just some legendary season. But I don't know how it could be legendary without the feeds. We'll figure it out. We'll go from there. Subscribe. Follow me on twitter or something i don't know survivor season's around and i live tweet a lot so if you want to read my bullshit follow me there aside from that like subscribe do all this stuff i have plenty of videos coming we got the traders wrapping up soon i think my next video is actually going to be my trader season review which i've been working on for a long time australian survivors going strong also i will say this now i don't know if anyone cares but I need to shout out Shannon Gus because she is an icon in the Survivor universe and seeing the hate she's been getting because of the certain actions of a certain player on Australian Survivor really hurts my heart. I'm sending so much love to her. She's been a big inspiration for me. I've listened to almost everything she's put out. She is my gateway to International Survivor and no one's going to disrespect my queen like that. Anyways, that'll do it for me. I love you platonically, of course, and I will undoubtedly see ya when I see ya. Bye bye